EVA-3. Uh, they get their foot restraint set up, and they, uh, you can see some video of the crew preparing this foot restraint with an ingress aid. They'll need to do the same uh, in setting up the multi-use tether and uh, grapple. And you can see the crew doing this in the water. This provides the, the temporary location for the, the old battery as they're handing them back and forth. So they'll remove the fifth of the old batteries and position it on the, uh, what we call the mutt ball stack end effector. and they use the end effector to grab the scoop and hold it out of position while they do the, uh, the other battery swaps. Um, Chris commands the arm into position to remove the, the fifth of the new batteries to be installed. He takes the MLI out of the way, installs the scoops, and then takes out the new battery. Okay, here we have footage of the crew taking one of the new batteries off of the ICC VLD and they command the arm backwards out of the way so that it clears the battery. In this particular case, uh, the crew is able to more or less lean back and hand the battery between them while they're in their foot restraints um, and install it in a new position. Um, the crew then repositions the foot restraint to remove the final old battery. They swap the uh, scoop location and take out the last of the old batteries. Chris then commands the arm to the, the last of the new batteries. Again, going through the MLI removal, installation of the scoops, and then removal of the battery. Once that is installed, all of the new batteries are now on the IEA. The temporarily stowed battery gets moved onto the ICC VLD. Scoops are removed. The MLI is replaced. And now all of the batteries have been swapped out uh, with their new one. Uh, the crew begins the worksite cleanup by removing the articulating portable foot restraints. and installing them on their uh, body restraint tethers. They also remove uh, the mutt ball stack and the other two scoops. I'll stow those in bags to bring them back. Uh, long duration tethers or gap spanners were routed to aid in translation on a previous flight. They'll remove those to clean up the work site. Uh, here you see the crew taking one of the foot restraints and putting it on their body restraint tether to get that out of the way for translation. After that, the crew heads out, and the last thing that they'll do on this EVA is make their way back to Jeff, where they'll do a repeat of the camera relocation by removing MLI, taking the camera, and repositioning it on the aft stanchion on the JEF. And that concludes EVA-4. EVA-5 is a, a deferrable EVA. A lot of the content that we plan to do on this EVA is uh, for future missions, and um, we, we hope to get it out of the way for those. I have a video of that, so I'd like to start that right now. On this EVA, uh, Tom Marshburn is EV-1, and he heads out to the Special Positioning Dexterous Manipulator, or Dexter, where he is going to fix a misplaced uh, multi-layer insulation. Um, on a previous flight, uh, this 
multi-layer insulation uh, was not quite completed, so he's going to make his way there and put that into position and then press some other Velcro down and uh, get that all cleaned up. While he's doing that, uh, Chris is going to make his way out to Z1 to reconfigure um, one of the power to one of the control moment gyros. Uh, this reconfiguration was attempted on two previous flights, STS-123 and 119, um, but in both of those cases, uh, the crew tried to work on the front side of the panel and were unable to disconnect the connector. In this case, Chris is going to be doing it on the aft phase. After that's done, the crew will make their way to S3 for the payload attach system deployment. Um, there are three remaining payload attached systems that need to be uh, deployed and you can see these blinking right here. Uh, in this particular case we have a new technique for deploying them where we keep the pallet from uh, positioning itself in the detent position. Um, and I've got a graphic right here that will show roughly how the crew plans to do this. Um, they'll position themselves um, near uh, the deploy brace so you see both crew members here. Uh, they re release uh, the diagonal brace, swing it out of the way, temporarily stow that in position, and then they'll remove the yoke and swing the platform up just high enough so that it does not go into the detent position. Um, they, they clear it just far enough so that the brace beam can go back underneath and get installed and then swing it back again. And this technique will be used on all of the, uh, the PAS deploys uh, that the crew attempts. After that's done, uh, the crew makes their way to, um, which is uh, very, in the same work site, uh, the WETA antenna. Uh, they'll bring this out in the airlock with them. They'll make their way back, retrieve this antenna, and install it on an existing stanchion that is on the S3 truss. This completes uh, the fifth and final STS-127 EVA. And uh, at this point, I brought a special tool along today uh, that is called uh, the, the detent release tool. And as I mentioned, uh, the crew had difficulty with um, the platform when it got stuck in the detent position. So a special tool was developed by uh, the engineering community um, to enable us to depress the, the detent buttons. Um, what I have here is the, the detent release tool. Uh, these two pins right here will be depressed and the crew will slide this down into uh, the, the hinge part. Um, they'll release this and hopefully that will push the detent out of the way. If it's not sufficient force, uh, they rotate a handle which pulls a wedge up and pushes these pins apart to hopefully uh,